Hello YouTube, today we're looking at 9 different hacks for your Sony Alpha 6400. We're going to go pretty fast, so if you've just bought one, good for you, you're going to learn a few things today. If you've already had one for a while, you might still find some interesting things in this video. So try watch till the end and let's get going. He's the how-to guy. Subscribe. The first hack is all about clear image zoom. This allows you to zoom into your image with almost any lens and it gives you a pretty smooth effect without losing much quality. When a power zoom lens is mounted like this one, you'll see it says power zoom on the left hand side there. All you need to do is zoom to your appropriate zoom levels. It'll automatically use clear image zoom to go two times further. This is how you do it. So here we are. This is what you'd see on your cameras. Go to your menu. Then you would have to navigate to picture number two, as you can see on the top. And you'd go to zoom setting. And I have it set on by default, but you can click OK and you can see there's optical zoom, there's clear image zoom and there's digital. Let's leave it on clear image zoom for now. Let's go back to the screen. Using your camera, you'll see it goes to 22 mil, 25 back up to 42 and at this stage it's using clear image zoom when any non-power zoom is mounted onto your camera then you can use the control wheel this little dial to actually zoom into your shot you can do this by assigning the zoom key to a custom button on your camera now i'm attaching a different lens you can see this lens does not have any power zoom so you need to map the bottom right button the delete button and then you'll be able to use clear image zoom. So how do you map the bottom right delete button? Let's click on the menu first. Then you go to screen, camera screen number two, page eight of nine, and you'll see custom key. Ideally, you want to do this for your video, let's say, and you click on your video. Of nine number three, I've set that up to the bottom right button. That's usually the delete button, but today we're going to set it up as the zoom button. So let's show you what it does. So remember, this is a non-power zoom lens and it's nice and smooth and you don't lose much quality with this. The next hack is to actually get one of these Andor, that's the brand, Andor motorized dollies. They're really useful. You can do some awesome B-roll like this. So the next tip I'd like to talk about is all about this little graph. That's your histogram, right? And everything on the left hand side of your histogram is actually your dark colors. Everything on, well, this side over here, those are your white colors, right? Pure white, okay? So anything that appears in the middle is generally considered on this side, is generally considered to be well exposed, not over, not underexposed. It's what you want to get, right? The left hand side of your screen are the dark colors, those are your shadows. And if everything moves, if that whole graph moves over to the left hand side, it basically means your photo is underexposed. If everything starts to move to the left hand side, it means your photo is overexposed and you'll probably lose details in like the clouds or there'll be just be too many bright parts in your image. Now, the issue with the Sony A64000 is when you adjust something on the screen, that little histogram disappears. So when when you're trying to get your exposure right, watch what happened. Ah, it shows you the little graph of your f-stop number, which makes the histogram disappear, which is kind of annoying. So there's a way to get around this, and let me show you how. On the menu, and we go to page 2, 6-9, you'll see it says display or auto review 6-9. At the bottom it says exposure set guide. You click OK and you turn that off. Now we go back to the display again and we try and adjust something. Let's try and look, it is adjusting. If you have a look, that little F7, 7.1 number at the bottom, able to adjust without actually destroying the histogram or removing the histogram. So I thought that's a pretty cool tip and we'll put it in. The next tip or sort of accessory that I would recommend you get for your Sony X6400 is some kind of wireless lav mic. Now, the reason I'm calling this a hack is because this camera actually comes with an external 3.5 millimeter input so you can mount an external microphone. Now, the best thing that I found is the Rode Wireless Go lav mic, right? So you actually have a receiver on this side. You can see there is a receiver and you have the microphone which you can use as your actual microphone. It's actually got a little microphone. They pair up in about three seconds. You do need to have direct line of sight for this to work, but apparently it works till up to just over 200 feet. I haven't tested that myself. I probably will in a future video, but have a look at the sound quality. It's not bad considering the price point. It's around 200 US dollars, so that is expensive. 
and I understand that a lot of people don't want to spend $200 but it gives you a lot of versatility in your sound and yeah I think it's useful have a look you can actually record presenter style stuff and the sounds not that bad it's great for YouTube videos so maybe consider getting one it adds a lot of creativity to your shoots and you can almost put the camera anywhere the sound quality is not bad I wouldn't mind getting a wind reduction cover or some kind of dead cat type thing but it's not bad and I've been pretty happy with it. The next hack I want to talk about is all about using your touchscreen to do zoom in manual focus. Not many people know about this, but it's actually a pretty cool tool that I use sometimes. So the default focus when you push the shutter button is just to focus on the center. It tries to find whatever it thinks should be in focus. We want to change this to double tap manual focus. So what you need to do is click on the function button make sure your screen is on manual focus so your focus mode should be manual focus you just turn, change that then you double click on the screen on the windmill in the background and you adjust it manually with your lens there it's coming into focus then you click the shutter button and you take your shot you'll see the puppy is not in focus and the windmill in the background is in focus so let's make the puppy in focus so you click the puppy's nose same thing get it in focus and there's your shot so the next tip or hack I want to talk about is actually using your shutter button to start and stop recording the old Sony cameras you couldn't do this so this is quite a nice thing to have now and I use it very often I don't know why I never really use the movie button anymore the little red button on the side but I use the shutter button to start and stop recording so this is how you set that up go into your menu and you'll see that when you click on picture image 2 movie 3 so that's page 3 of 9 on the second tab at the top you'll see movie with shutter is on if it's off put it on because it's a useful thing to have noise that you hear from the shutter when you're taking a photo now have a listen to this now listen that noise if you're track, trying to take photos in a crowd or whatever it is is kind of annoying but you can disable it like this click on your menu and you see on page 2 the 4 9 you just click silent shooting and make sure you put that on and then if we go back to the shooting mode again and you click you'll still have the timer and some eye tracking no noise and it took a photo so that's pretty cool one thing you need to know about is that when you are in movie mode you can only shoot movies but when you're in any other mode like for example aperture priority or intelligent auto or anything you can shoot movies and still photos I'm in intelligent auto at the moment and if I hit the shutter button it takes a photo but if I hit the little record button on the side it records a movie which is pretty cool All for those people that like to shoot photos and videos at the same time and don't like switching between things so I wouldn't even sit in movie mode if I were you on the dial so the next tip for the Sony a6400 is using picture profiles the picture profiles are really good actually how you get to them 11-14 page 11-14 right at the bottom you see picture profiles is off if you click on it'll give you a screen so you can actually look and frame your shot up and just cycle through and see how they change picture profile one is very popular pitch I like picture profile two personally because it's a little darker it looks a little bit more cinematic um, and you can just go through and you can see that one's also good for if you're filming some kind of it's got a bit more high contrast so if you're at the beach or something uh, but yeah picture profile 5 is very cinematic as well 2 and 5 and it uh, looks like a bit of black and white low contrast picture profile 8, 9 and 10 I haven't can't say I've used those but there might be some situations where you want to use them you can also switch it off and just have the default but I personally like number 2 and you just say enter your videos will be recorded in picture profile 2 then once again if you like this video you have any comments please leave them down below and please if you want to subscribe that really helps me a lot and i really appreciate it so hit that subscribe button and see you again next time